this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 33 of the So Free Art podcast which is a little podcast I do each week about art and things and this one's going to be all about the things and it's going to be about out of body experiences and stuff to do with that so that's this week's topic but we also have the little art tip of the week which is going to be about fixing inking errors with a craft knife and talking about Inktober I've done another video for days 6 to 12 which I put on YouTube and you can find that at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson and for the last six days I've been doing Final Fantasy characters and seven little Sophies and the plan for next week is to do seven animals and seven little Sophies based off of my photos and you'll be able to find those because I've been posting them daily on Twitter and Instagram. Let's jump into this week's topic, which is all about out-of-body experiences. Now, is this art-related? It kind of is art-related. It all starts back in 2013. One night in 2013, I was down in my little art studio, which was just my spare room, (laughs) but I was down there drawing. And what I used to do back then, and I haven't done this for ages, I used to do these massive long, like 8 to 10 hour sessions of drawing. Because what I was doing back then was I was only drawing on the weekends. So during the week I was playing video games and watching anime. Um, and then at the weekends I would do these big sessions of like drawing. So one Saturday night I was down there drawing, minding my own business. And I suddenly become aware that I was watching I was I was watching my hand drawing as if it felt as if my hand was drawing on its own and it felt like I was just it felt like my hand wasn't my hand um, and it it lasted about I would say maybe 5 seconds because what happened was I was watching my hand and I suddenly thought I'm my hand's drawing on its own and then at first it was like that looks a bit weird And then suddenly I thought, hang on, my hand is drawing on its own. And as I thought about it, the more I thought about it, which this is a bit like a lucid dream. When when you're in a lucid dream, if you think too much, you'll pop back, you'll pop, you can quite easily pop out of the dream. Well, the same thing happened here, whereby I suddenly realised that my hand was drawing on its own. And the more I sort of focused on it, I ended up losing it and popping back into my body. But it was so weird that I just remember putting the pencil down and sitting there thinking, what what just happened? Because like back then I didn't know nothing about spiritual stuff. I wasn't spiritual or anything. I was, I was just drawing for fun. But it was such a strange... It was probably... That moment changed everything because I just remember sitting there thinking there is way more to art than just drawing like this is a really powerful thing because it was in that moment that I just I realized that something more was going on than just drawing and it was that moment that made me like really sort of become obsessed with um improving my art so that moment is where it all started and looking back now it's quite funny but it's to me it's kind of obvious that this was sort of a spiritual journey that art is a spiritual journey because that moment made me realise art and spirituality is kind of linked and I think it's all about letting go because art, I've always said art is about facing your fears and I'm realising that like lucid dreaming and it now appears that out of body experiences it's all about letting go and facing your fears and the reason I've never really spoke about that um, experience where I saw my hand drawing on its own is because for a long time I didn't really believe, I guess I didn't really believe that it was, I thought it was just in my head, so I didn't really, I've not really spoke about it before. I think once I wrote about it on the blog post, but I wrote about it at the bottom of a post, sort of like hidden away so nobody would see it. So I've never really spoke about it, and like even until recently I've always thought people would think you're crazy if you start saying stuff like that, but this is why it's important. I think it's important to talk about things like this because 
this is maybe how the world gets an open mind is by just hearing people talking about things so the funny thing about this is during the week my sister came round and because I wanted to talk to her about our body experiences but I thought because again I thought is she going to like judge me and think I'm crazy or something so I've been talking to her about lucid dreaming for quite a few months and we always talk about dreams so she was just about to leave on this on Wednesday and I thought oh, I'm going to tell her about this lucid dream I just had and as I, as I started talking I thought I popped into my head I said shall I talk to her about out of body experiences as well and I thought yeah I'm going to I'm going to risk it <laughs> so I started saying oh can I tell you about a dream I just had which was it was a lucid dream and then I was going to s- start talking about the out of body and she said oh can I tell you about one of my dreams as well so she had already said that and then I I started saying oh I'm trying to go into an out of body experience and as I said that her face kind of went a bit weird like the funny thing is just before that we had been talking about spontaneity because um in the morning she had she's want she wants to do something and then during the day something happened which is in sync with what she wanted and it seems like it's random but I just I said to her like spontaneity is is a real thing it's when you start wanting something it's like the universe starts bringing it to you but you have to like be you have to have the awareness to see what's going on and this kind of links like the thing with this topic is i could go all over the place because um this kind of links into how i think the real world is a dream is because when you're dreaming you can instantly manifest things so if you have a thought it you can make your thoughts real straight away but in the real world it's the same thing but it takes time so you can have the thought but in the real world because of time it it takes a period of time for that thought to become real so we were talking about spontaneity and then I mentioned this out of body thing that I was trying to do it and her face went a bit funny and then once I'd finished talking about my dream she started talking and she explained how that night she had had an out of body experience where she was having a dream about being stuck in these like brambles and it was scratching her skin and then all of a sudden she popped out of her body and she was watching herself in bed dreaming and she knew that she was dreaming that dream and she could see her body like scratching her her physical body was moving about as if so as if she was inside of that dream and I just thought well how weird is this because it's almost as if by her having that experience it allowed it allowed her to have an open mind when I started talking about out of body so that was that kind of I don't know I just felt really quite happy about that so at the moment I haven't been able to induce an out of body experience and the only reason I started looking into this was because a couple I think it was last week I talked about these wormholes that I've been having in my dreams and so as I've been researching that to me it feels like these wormholes are kind of linked to outer body and that is why they because I said it, it's like you're looking into these wormholes it's as if you could it, it felt as if you could actually go inside of them they're really weird but so because I was looking into that it made me start um, looking into outer body experiences as well and so I'm just going to talk about a few little things that I've had um, and then I'm going to talk about like where I'm at at the moment with these out-of-body things and why I think out-of-body experiences are quite important and stuff. So my first ever lucid dream that I induced, it started by me, I was in bed and I thought it was a false awakening, well it probably was, so I was in bed and I suddenly found myself floating above the carpet and I could see the carpet in proper like really detail, I could see each sort of fibre of the carpet and I thought to myself, oh, I'm dreaming now, um, so let's let's get outside and get into the dream. So I spun, my body spun around, and then I floated across the carpet, underneath the door frame, um, out into the passage, and I'd, I'd just woken up to go to the toilet, and I live in a shared house, and the bloke who lived in the room opposite, he had his light on, and in this dream, 
he had his light on so it was as if it was identical to how it was when I'd just woken up and then I floated down the stairs got to the front door and I suddenly popped up into like full size and went out the door and then I suddenly popped back into my bedroom and then I basically jumped out the window <laughs> into a lucid dream and that and this lucid dream was the most vivid lucid dream I've had so far and it was the longest it lasted about 45 minutes so I'm thinking that I'm thinking if you can get into a lucid dream from an out of body state I feel like that's how you can have the like most stable lucid dream because I almost feel like the out of body is above a lucid dream so if you go into a lucid dream from an out of body it's almost like you're going backwards you're going into it from a higher place so that's why it's more stable so that was the first one when I I realized that that little bit when I was floating above the carpet I feel like that was out that was actually an out of body experience and this is something that I've heard people saying is that it's quite hard to know what is the difference between a lucid dream and an out of body and I I think they are somebody somebody said that they're the same side of the same coin <laughs> there's a different side of the same coin so this other one that I had which this is this is this was amazing this one I was trying to go into a lucid dream and I was lying in bed and then all of a sudden it sounded as if I was in the middle of a tornado it was like the wind was whirling around and I was just lying in bed because I, I was fully as far as I was concerned I was like fully awake I just had my eyes shut but I could hear all this sound um, as if I was in the middle of a storm and then all of a sudden it's as if somebody picked up the bed and they were shaking the bed and I just remember lying there thinking what in the world is going on here <laughs> and I had no idea what was going on I'd, I'd never like looked into out of body experiences or anything but I just remember in the end I opened my eyes and it slowly went away so I don't I didn't know what that was at the time but that's like the early signs of going into out of body then I've got this other thing which which is the false awakenings something I've noticed is if I'm inside of a lucid dream and or if I'm inside of a dream and I become aware that I'm in the dream but I'm not able to stay in the lucid state I, I notice that I normally pop into a false awakening and this has happened so many times now that it makes me feel like a false awakening because that keeps happening when I'm not able to stay lucid in a dream it's made me feel like a false awakening is almost like a waiting room it's almost like it's a waiting room where the dream the dream world puts you into this false awakening until you're ready to wake up and this makes me feel like it's linked to out body because it's it's almost as if the false awakening is the waiting room as your like spiritual body is getting back to the physical body so i'm beginning to feel like false awakenings are linked to like out of body um, so that's just something else but something I've noticed is that spinning it spinning the sensation of spinning seems to be linked to all of this so um, like, well I'm pretty convinced now that we are not our physical body and that we are what I think we are is actually spinning orbs of like energy and the reason I think that is because that sound which is the like you're in a thunderstorm it's it's almost like it's an energy and then the reason I think it's orbs is because Buddhism and stuff they, they talk about when you go into deep meditation you see these orbs and the other thing that's quite strange is um, I've got this singing bowl which you can hear there that's what I use for the little art tip but if you spin it instead of hitting it it generates this like sound which is like pure energy and apparently these singing bowls they have they each have there's lots of different ones that have different frequencies which connect with the chakras um, so I don't I haven't really looked into them enough to be able to talk about them but I just know that I heard one on a video and I thought I like the sound of that and this one is linked to the throat sh chakra 
which is all to do with um, like believing in yourself and basically like having self confidence and stuff. And it, I think it's helping me. But um, the reason I bring it up is because I feel like this is linked to what we really are. And I think this is why they resonate with us. Because I think we are spinning orbs. And this sound is like the sound of what we are. But the reason I've come to that is because the sensation of spinning, it seems to keep popping up in everything. So when I was doing these float tanks, like the sleep deprivation tanks, one of the first things I had was, and it kept happening, was a sensation of spinning. And it's a very strange sensation. And then one of the tips for stabilising a lucid dream is to spin. So if you can be inside of a lucid dream, if you can remember to start spinning, it will stabilise the dream and bring more clarity. And it's almost as if that the act of spinning is like getting you in sync with your spinning orb. That's what it feels like to me. Um, and then the other thing is, with meditation, I've started doing this thing every night before I go to bed. I will just spend like five minutes staring at... I've got this little... He's called Kupe from the anime Madoka Magica. He's like a little teddy bear. And he's hanging off my wardrobe with these big pink eyes. So what I do is I just stare at his eyes for like about three to five minutes. But I'm staring at him without blinking. And after about a minute or so of not blinking, what I've noticed is that... Because you're looking at the eyes, but you can also see like the perimeter of the room so you can see everything around the eyes <laughs> looking to the eyes <laughs> but you're focused on the eyes but you can still see what's happening around the eyes and what I've noticed is that if you after about a minute of just staring the room starts to spin but what happens is I will it will do, I'll start looking at the spinning and the moment I look at the spinning it sort of goes back and it's again like that thing I said about before with the lucid dreams and stuff when you put your focus on it it stops like how when I put my focus on the hand drawing on its own it's that's when I pop it back the same thing happens with this spinning so it's almost as if you have to be able to look at the eye and as the spinning starts if you could keep your focus on the eye I have this feel I have this feeling that the spinning would just carry on and it you would end up as if you was upside down. That's what I feel like. But I'm not able to do that. Because I keep getting distracted by the spinning. But I just have this feeling. That, that you could actually spin right around. <laughs> that would be funny. But the other thing that I've thought about with this is. Um, like when you have alcohol. And you get drunk. One of the things they say is that. you It ends up like the room is spinning. So th- there's there's definitely something to this spinning. Um, and the only thing I th- think at the moment is we are actually spinning orbs. Um, and that's what I'm thinking. And I, I think the sensation of spinning is a way for us to link and sync up with these, with what we really are. Um, that's just what I'm thinking. So I was going to, I was also going to say something about, because I'm really into Formula One. And one of the drivers, one of the best drivers ever was Ayrton Senna. And he once spoke about He was driving around Monaco and he was like so in the zone that he said he ended up going out of body and he was he was above the racetrack looking down at himself driving around the racetrack. So he had an out of body experience whilst he was driving. And I feel like this is this is sort of why it's linked to art is because when you're drawing or creating something, you're so in the moment that you completely let go of who you really are you sort of forget who you are and I think it's that letting go that would ultimately produce the out of body experience and I I think that's kind of what happened when I was drawing that night but it's one of these things that you can't force it the the more you try to let go this is what I'm noticing at the moment the more you try to let go the more you can't let go so it's almost like you have to stop trying to let go in order to be able to let go and that's the main thing I'm struggling with at the moment which is I'm 
I'm trying to induce an out of body experience and there's a lot of signs that you're getting close to it because it goes to that vibration you start feeling vibrations in your body you start feeling like a heaviness there's all these different signs and so I've gotten I'm getting the early stages of the signs but then I can't let go to fully like become out of body and I think it's linked to fear as well there's this fear of if I let go what's going to (laughs) happen even though it's weird because even though I know it's okay to let go there's still something holding me back so that's where I'm at at the moment and then I was going to say like why why do out of body and this is a bit of a this is this is like another theory of mine it's just based on everything I've experienced and everything that I've heard other people say I'm just putting it all together and I'm coming up with this little theory which I'd like to talk about this on another podcast in more detail but I think the reason to go out body is because we are like we are at the moment we think we're physical and if we keep if we think we're physical we're always going to be physical so like when we die we're just going to keep coming back as physical because that's what we think we are so I feel like earth is a training ground with the whole purpose to teach us what we really are and like the reason I've always wondered why would they why would there be a training ground to teach you like why not just like why bother going through all of that and I think the reason is because I think what's happening is and this goes back to what I said before about how I think when when we're dreaming I think that the real the physical world is a dream and we have a creator who is dreaming so it links into that because I think the creator I think there's a creator of the creators which I said before is that I think it keeps looping back until you get to like the ultimate source of everything which I would imagine is um just a spinning orb (laughs) just a spinning orb I would imagine is like the original spinning orb so I think what's happening is you've got the original spinning orb which could create anything it ever wanted and so because I think about this if you are a creator like as an artist what do you do you you learn all the skills to become as good as you can at, at drawing and painting and stuff and then at some point you realize how amazing it is to produce art you end up becoming a teacher because you want you want to spread that knowledge so that other people can become artists so i'm thinking this creator created everything possible and then it got to a point where it wanted to create more creators so it created like an environment which you could look at as like earth it created that to um, basically produce more creators so the whole purpose of everything is the creator is create is looking for more creators so this creator has created earth and it's then spawned all these little orbs and put these little orbs into earth and they think they're physical beings and the point of it is can we work out what we really are which is this spinning orb and then can we like understand what we really are which is basically we have the we have the possibility of becoming our own creator at which point we would like split off and become we become side by side with the original orb so it's almost like i look at it as almost like we're like a field of trees so you like a tree plants its seeds and then more trees grow so the whole the whole purpose of it is that the creator just wants to create more creators and the process of becoming a creator is what we are inside of but i think most people this is going to sound quite funny but i think most people are going to settle for heaven because i think what happens is when we die whatever we've learned in this life it goes with us and then because this is all mind generated most people are going to believe that there's a heaven and so what will happen is like for instance jesus will come to them if they believe in jesus and i'm not actually religious but 
like let's just say Jesus comes to you when you die and and Jesus says come with me to heaven most people will will say yes I will go to heaven and then they would basically go to a new it would be like a new physical place and you would you would think if you was inside of heaven you would think that you are in the final place but reality is that you could become this spinning orb which would be higher than heaven um, and then what might happen is that if you if you're inside if you said yes to heaven and you went inside heaven but you somehow had this slight awareness that you could become this spinning orb what could happen is that whilst you're inside heaven you could suddenly think I think there's something above heaven most people in heaven wouldn't I don't think think that but if you did think that you would then have to this is what could be like a fallen angel it's like somebody who was in heaven and realized that there's something above heaven and the only way to do that is to put yourself back to earth to make it physical because physical is the only place where you can feel things because of time it's like this goes back to another theory where um, with earth it's time has been slowed down so that you can feel things and that's the only way you're able to learn so because there's time on earth that's where you're able to learn and so you would have to you would basically have to leave heaven come back down to earth go through the whole process again of trying to work out what you are so that then you could die meet say jesus again but this time you would say no i am a spinning orb at which point i would imagine jesus would just disintegrate and like a dream and then if you had the awareness you would actually be able to come you'd actually be able to become this and like a spinning orb at which point you could become your own creator the reason to go out of body is because when you go out of body you're going to be able to interact with other beings and maybe even you'll be able to interact with these spinning orbs and then you can bring that back into the physical to process it and it's it's almost like you need the physical world and what i would call the dream world which would include all of the out of body stuff you need those two which is the physical and the spiritual you need those two together because you can't you can't become a creator in either just one of those you have to be in both so that's just what i'm thinking and i think our body is the way to connect the two together with the ultimate goal of becoming a creator but the reason it's it's going to be really hard is because to become a creator you have to fully let go and become completely fearless which would mean facing every single type of demon and stuff which this actually goes back into the tibetan book of the dead which talks about how when you die you have to like face demons and gods and everything and so that's the process of becoming fearless and the reason you would have to become fearless is because if you become a creator you're going to be overseeing everything that all these little creations that you make and some of them are going to be like scary so you're it's almost like preparing you for becoming a creator but i'm convinced that there's something going on here and i'm convinced that we are inside of something quite special and like just way more important i think than so like imagine if this is what's happening and we are inside the physical obsessed with physical things imagine what you would feel like if you when you die you pop out and you realize that you could have become this creator but instead you <laughs> focused on little things like physical things which are so unimportant so that's basically this week's topic all about out of body stuff <laughs> and that noise or bong means it is time for this week's little art tip and this week's little art tip is all about fixing inking errors with a craft knife and this is something that happened by mistake during the week and what what happened was i was drawing doing one of my drawings and i accidentally um, put too much ink on the paper and instead of having a character's eye it just looked like a black blob so i realized that i had to find a way to try to remove some of that ink 
and the paper I'm using is like an off-white colour so I realised that I couldn't use uh, correcting fluid or white ink or something I had to come up with something else and I suddenly thought why don't I use try to use a craft knife so I have this little craft knife in my drawer called the X-Acto retractable knife and I've never used it before and it felt like a good opportunity to use it so it's a really nice li little craft knife which you can use a top to like click it in and out I talk about that in the video which I'll put links to in the show notes at sophielawson.com but what I realised was that you can use a craft knife to ever so slightly if you do it really gently you can remove ink from the paper and what I reckon you could do is you could put a big block of black ink on the paper and almost draw with the craft knife um, like draw in reverse which that might be quite a fun little exercise to do um, and that's basically this week's little art tip really is that you can use a craft knife to remove ink if you make a mistake and basically fix your errors <laughs> so that's this week's little art tip and I do believe that is it for this week's podcast as well so episode 33 is going to pop out of existence <laughs> and you can find show notes and stuff at sophielawson.com I hope you liked this episode and if you have any comments or anything you can send a message at sophielawson.com slash contact or if you're on YouTube you can post a little comment in the comments below and I'll get back to it and if you've got like a topic or something you'd like me to talk about I can talk about it on a future episode so that is basically this week's podcast. All that's left is this week's inspirational quote, which goes to Robert Munro, and it is, Always know and remember that you are more than your physical body. Robert Munro.